the May when the last major hurricane came here, was well, back in 1992. I wasn't even born. And you know, my dad was yeah. like, you know, recently came from Pakistan. And you know, right. obviously, you know, in Pakistan, we know I'm not hurricane to Athene, I'm not a pastor, Pakistan, I'm a pond hurricane, the cyclone as a dada. So my dad was like, I don't know what hurricane was like. My dad thought it was just like some like, you know, publicity sons or just so that people go, people can go to the ghost. I mean, I'm going to ask you, Ben Loki. I'm going to ask you, yeah, 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 publicity sons, that people go to the store and buy things, so that the economy is going to stimulate. It's not a conspiracy theory, it's not a conspiracy theory. Right, right. That's what my dad thought it was. Welcome back to Puck Cord. Today's guest, Hamza Farooq from Miami, Florida. 24 years old, Hamza was born and raised in the US, but maintains a very close connection to Pakistan. So today he'll give us a Pardesi perspective, so to speak. And specifically in today's discussion, we have two American guys, Hamza and myself, talking from a purely Pakistani American perspective, which is something we haven't done enough on this show yet. So you'll hear a lot of discussions from our angle here in the US. Hamza talks about his time growing up, going to a Catholic high school, and living in Florida, we talk in depth about the many weather-related disasters in America before we move on to discuss Pakistan and Pakistanis in America. We'll have a lot of storytelling by Hamza. Finally, we wrap up with a discussion on racism and gun violence in the US. So let's get started. I'm 24 years old, so Abby, I did my bachelor's in IT. From a local university here in South Florida, it's called Nova Southeast University, mm-hmm. and uh, I did my bachelor's in information technology. I got an internship three years ago, which converted into a job. Nice for a bank, and it's partially it's it's mostly for a bank's IT department. And now I've mm-hmm. been there for like three and a half years now. I'm I'm a uh, IT security specialist for a bank. So you nice. know the more more towards the cybersecurity side and stuff like that. And I'm currently doing my master's right now as well. So no, that's cool. It, it's good. It's good. But yeah, you mentioned in your notes that you went to a Catholic high school. Yeah, Catholic high school. Yeah, I went. It was actually an all boys Catholic high school. Okay, those are private schools. Those are private schools. Yeah, I see. Okay, so th- does private school mean that you had to, uh, your parents had to pay for you to be there, or yeah. was it like a special selection to be there? Yeah, yeah my parents, my parents had to pay pay for me to be there. I see. That's how it was. Yeah. Well, what was the uh, rationale behind that decision? Basically, what happened was that you know the public schools down here are not that mm-hmm. great. I mean, some are good and some are not good. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, my 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 dad was always like, you know, we have to give you the best education possible. But the high joy and upper high compromise niggas are like, you guys have to get the best education as possible. And you know, the middle school and elementary school I went to, that was also actually a, a private school. But that was, I mean, it was co-ed, it was mm-hmm. private school, it was a very small school and stuff like that. So it was, yeah. it was, it was you know, you, it kind of just it just kind of like you know, fit, it fit well. And then when it came to the high school part, you know. But well, that told me like, yeah, yeah, all three of you guys are gonna go to a all boys Catholic high school. But like, oh, but like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can say that again. It's like all boys, you know. <laughs> like, like, nope, nope. It's like, no, no, it's like, no, it's it's all, it's all it's all boys. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I kind of I kind of understood like the like, where he was coming from, you know, because that age is a little a little tough. You know, you're yeah. going through some changes, and you know, that's not the right age to be, you know, yeah, be stuff like that. So I I understood the rationale and everything. As far as the Catholic school part, I mean, he's like, okay, you guys know your values. You guys, we've raised you. You guys know who you are. You guys are Muslim. You guys know your values and everything like that. So there shouldn't be any, uh, any, you know, confusion, you know, as to go mm-hmm. here because you're 14, 15 years old. It's not like you're two or three years old. We're going to get confused. You know, you already know, yeah. you already know, you, you already know who you are and, you know, and what your values are and what you stand for. Yeah. So because your, your main purpose to go there is to get an education, you know, your mm-hmm. main purpose, main purpose, that's your main purpose. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, we're like, okay, fine. But uh, in the in the beginning, it was kind of weird. But after that, after that, you just kind of you, you just kind of get used to it, you know. And you know, everybody yeah. everybody knows you're like, you know, you're you're Muslim and everything like that. It was always, it was only me and this other Pakistani kid, and we were the only two Muslim people in the school. That's how oh. it was. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a good experience. I would say so. It was a good experience. You know, you you kind of kind of it kind of opens up your mind to see how different people uh, do their yeah. thing. And, you know, they get to ask right. you questions about as well, about, you know, our faith and how we how we practice our faith and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. yeah. it, was, it was it was it was it was good. It was good. I would say yeah. I would say I would say it was a good. How was it, how was it different from a, a public school experience, though? Like, uh, do they have you know how like uh, uh, there's Islamic schools in Pakistan right. and they they have separate classes just for Quran studying and things like that? Was this how the Catholic school was too? like uh, separate classes for religious studies or? Well, basically, yeah. like mandatory religious studies. We took we took we took a religion class that was mandatory to take a religion class. And it was basically their yeah. religion. And a lot of the, a lot yeah. of the things from their religion is similar to our religion because you know obviously it's you know will be Alec and you know the Abrahamic mm-hmm. religion and stuff like that. So a lot right. of the things a lot of things kind of match, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of the beliefs kind of match as well. Yeah. So uh, you know, right. the, whenever you know the religion religion class, my my point my my take was, and even my brother's take were who actually went to the school before me, mm-hmm. 
Then like, just mm-hmm. take it as a subject. That's all you have to do. Yeah. Just take it as a subject. You know, you learn about the history. Yeah. You learn about the mm-hmm. Crusades. You know, they bring up the Muslims as well, stuff like that. So it's just a subject. Take it as a history subject. You know, mm-hmm. that's all you have to do it as. So uh, right, right. And you know, as far as far as you know, like you know, learning the Quran and everything. You know, my mom taught me that at home. My two older brothers actually went to Islamic school for that as well. But my mom taught me the Quran at home, how to read the Quran at as well. So uh, you know, we we got we got the we got the we got the good we got the like the yeah. you know upbringing, upbringing right. and everything when we were young. So. so you benefited from it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Benefited yeah. From it. Exactly. Did they have any mandatory like uh, you, like you have to pray or something like that? Any anything like that? Well, they they would have they would have like masses and stuff like that. And I think you you would just have to go there and we you know we, we would just we I would just I would just stand there and just you know just uh, you yeah. know show show respect and to to how mm-hmm. they do things and stuff like that. So. Right. But it was, you know, it's, 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 it's always interesting to see how they're doing things. You know, it's always good to open, course, your, yeah. mind up, open your mind up to, a, a, to another, a, to another faith and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. you know, they would always ask me questions like, okay, so what do you guys believe about Jesus? I'm like, oh, I would explain to them. Oh yeah, we believe he's a prophet and stuff like that. So, you know, it's mm-hmm. always, it's always good to, you know, have that inner faith dialogue mm-hmm. and see how people are doing different things. And, you, and your mind opens up to different things and you get out, you get outside your comfort zone a little bit. And that, you know, that, that, that makes your, makes you more, uh, makes you more uh more than one dimensional you know yeah so you live in miami i live in miami florida have you ever been to miami or florida by any no chance? i i've actually oh. have not i, I haven't mm-hmm. gotten a chance to actually visit florida at all right right but actually yeah we I mean, definitely definitely come down to miami you know whenever you get a chance and uh, but the, you know the, the thing that they say about miami is that it's very it's very unique that miami is very close to the u.s it's not actually the u.s <laughs> that's what they say about miami because yeah. you know it, it, you have such a huge hispanic population hispanic as in you know for for our listeners who don't know hispanic is basically means spanish so mm-hmm. they have such a huge spanish population here is just like i mean like i think you know the, the Gora people they're the minority here I mean, you barely see any Gora people here <clears throat> it's very diverse <clears throat> oh, that much huh yeah. yeah, it's very, it's very diverse. It's a melting pot, you know, which, you know, for which as for us Pakistanis is a good thing, you know, because you have uh, different cultures and everything, you know, these mm-hmm. Spanish people, they're also immigrants. So, you know, they are kind of, they kind of understand what you on, on that, that, that type of level. But uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's very diverse. I mean, you can go, you can go to any grocery store. They expect wow. you to know Spanish. It's like, it's like that. They won't even talk to you in English. They'll just straight up talk to you in Spanish. Right. So within the, within the South Florida region, you, you have a very, you know, very decent, very decent Pakistani population. Not as big as compared to other cities, maybe like New York or Houston or something like that. Not not as big. Yeah. I I've seen it grow. I mean, like me and my my family have been here since for the past forty years. My dad came here in like nineteen seventy five, so he's been here for a while. So I uh, mean, our, our the Daisy population here has grown significantly because he has more and more people come here, and you have more Daisy events coming here and stuff like that. So it's it's grown. Yeah, would you say it's the largest uh, Daisy population in in Florida at least? I think the largest in Florida is probably Orlando. Orlando, okay, so probably, not... Orlando probably is the largest Desi population. South Florida, not so much. Not not so much. I mean, yeah, you have you have the, you have the Desi population in South Florida, but it's very spread out. You know, there's not like one yeah. specific area that you where you have like majority of Desis. You're very spread out. But if you go to Orlando, if you go to Orlando, you go if you ever get a chance to visit Orlando, you'll see a lot of Desi restaurants, a lot of halal mm-hmm. places that are there. So Orlando is very like you know very touristy. So they try to make yeah. they try to make it like that. But yeah, very huge, huge uh, Pakistani population there. Yeah, I just moved from uh, I was moving from Dallas to Boston, right? So that was kind of a shock in itself because Dallas is actually uh, secondary to Houston has a, a pretty big and growing Desi population, Pakistanis right. especially, right? Uh, a lot of a lot of restaurants and stuff. It's good. I mean, it's like it's like a, it's like a proud feeling as well. It's like okay, our, the community is so advanced, and you know you have Desi mm-hmm. Desi radio, Desi radio stations stuff like that. But yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good to see stuff like that. Houston, I mean, Houston's probably number one. You know, Houston, you have like Houston's a, number one right now. Yeah, yeah. That, that's where they they even had the uh, the Hum TV Awards there this year. Um, TV awards there, and uh, I don't know if you meant you saw about the Janoon concert as well. They had nine thousand yeah. people at the Janoon concert. Nine thousand people at the wow. Janoon concert, like wow for a, for a Pakistani concert in the U.S. That's that's big. Yeah, that is really big. Yeah, that's really big. Yeah, so Boston, not so much. Boston is really spread out. Believe it or not, I'm having a really hard time finding a good halal uh, grocery store here. Me and my mm-hmm. wife. So it's been it's been really tough. That's exactly. been kind of a culture shock for us, you know, because we're not used to it anymore. Right. I mean, are, are you, do you do you like the cold weather by any chance, or is, is that does that bother you a little bit? Or are you still like the hot weather? I don't. So, so I grew up in the Northeast. I grew up around right. New York, so I'm pretty uh-huh. used to the cold weather, but I don't like it. Right. Uh, but you know, a career brings you <laughs> wherever it wants to bring you. Right. Exactly. No, no. Of course, of course, you have to do what's best best for your career and everything. I, I yeah. personally, I hate cold weather. You know, I grew up in Miami. I mean, I would go to Pakistan every every summer or every other summer, and I would go in the summertime. So I'm just used yeah. to the hot weather, the humidity. I can handle hot weather, humidity. They can turn to Badashnu, yeah. Like I cannot turn Badashnu. Turn to Badashnu. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, Boston is not the right place for you then. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> even for me honestly i don't you just have to layer up honestly you have to wear like um two sweaters a jacket yeah. you know just get to the to your comfort level but yeah it is uncomfortable how'd yeah. you guys do with the latest uh hurricane it was a big scare there a few weeks ago it wasn't i mean yeah it what it didn't really come here i mean obviously i mean i we've been through like i would say like five or six hurricanes one of them actually uh-huh. came during ramzan it was back in yeah. 2005 mm-hmm. and i remember you know where it's ramzan, it's ramzan so basically the way hurricane season works is Hurricane season is from June 1st to November 1st. So we're almost done with mm-hmm. the thing. Today's, a, today's a, a late October, so November 1st is the last hurricane. But uh, mm-hmm. the last one we dealt with, well, the, the one that came right now, the, like in around like September-ish or like late yeah. August or something like that, we didn't get the worst of it. It actually churned a little bit north, alhamdulillah. So like, luckily, mm-hmm. we didn't get the worst of it. But uh, two years ago, we got Irma, and that was like the, our first major hurricane in like 10, 15 years that we got, the first major wow. one. So... Uh, all of the all of the houses here, all of the buildings here, they're all hurricane coated, mm-hmm. and you know it's just it's just like you know you they're built to withstand a hurricane. So it's like just like you go on, you go on the west coast, the you know Los Angeles and everything, yeah. all the buildings are built for withstanding earthquakes. It's kind of the same way here, you know they're built to withstand hurricanes. But uh, yeah. this one wasn't that bad. The one before that, we yeah, we didn't lose power at all. Thank God. <laughs> Luckily, we didn't lose power. That's good. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I'm I'm glad uh, I'm glad I got a hold of you to talk about this because that's one of the things that I never understood about Florida so much. But I think uh, a lot of it is just because the news kind of hype up a lot of the things that are going on. Uh, but from our perspective, living outside of Florida, right? From our perspective, it looks like it looks like Florida is getting slammed with hurricanes right. multiple times a year. And then they show it on the news and it's like, you know, 150 mile per hour winds, 200 mile right. per hour winds. The boards are flying off the houses. The ceilings are falling. Yeah, it's just all chaos. And so it just begs the question, like, why do people live down there? Right. Yeah. <laughs> from the rest <laughs> of the country. So I had some light to that. Honestly, I bought a chamosame like literally Jannate. Like, you know, I mean, if you, if you want seasons... This is not the place for you because you won't get seasons here. I mean, right now it's like late October and we still have 90 degree weather while everybody else in North America has probably like 30 to 40 degree weather. And it's cold, right? Uh-huh. So, yeah, uh, I mean, cold. it's good. I mean, we're used to the weather and everything, but the only thing you have to deal with is the hurricanes. If a, if a major yeah. hurricane is coming and that's an issue. I mean, like I was talking about the one hurricane we back had, the major one was actually called Hurricane Wilma. We had mm-hmm. it back in October of 2005 and very rarely do we get a hurricane out in October here. You know, it's just mm-hmm. like, I'm not going to get out of October, but I'm not August or September. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So, October, late October, I'm going to get out of October. I'm going to get out of October. I'm going to get out of October. Then, I'm going to get out of It was like Category 3. So, Category 1, so Category 5, you know, for any of our listeners who don't understand. So, your hurricanes are based in categories. So, you have Category mm-hmm. 1, Category 2, and the latest, largest is Category 5. So, yeah. it, that, that all changes depending on the wind, the wind speed of the, of the storm right. and everything. So uh, we had that back in Ramzan and we didn't have power for a week. And we were like doing Sehdi and we were doing, uh, you know, bringing, doing Aftar and like in the dark with like Mumbatiya and everything like that. And I remember going, I remember going to Taravi and it was like the masjid was on generator as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was just, it was just bad. You know, it wasn't, we, I mean, we adjust, we adjusted to it, but at the end of the day, that was like the last bad, bad hurricane that we had. I would say that back in 2005. Got it, got yeah. it. So you got category three, you got category four, category five, five is the worst, right? Five is the worst. At what point do they start telling people to evacuate? Is that category four? Basically, you have evacuation zones here. Luckily, you know, the thing is, Miami is very close to the ocean. Because that's how Florida is, right? Florida is a very peninsula. Yeah. So it's obviously right. you have the ocean on one side. So if you're living near the beach, you're going to evacuate. I mean, that's yeah. just like a no-brainer. If you decide to stay, that's that's your own decision. And if something happens to you, then the government is not responsible for it because they told you to evacuate. Right. So they're like, if you have something to do, then we don't have any responsibility for you, because we have told you first. But where do they evacuate? What do they do? Do they have to wait for you? Basically, they say, okay, well, I mean, you have shelters. Obviously, here you have, well, you have shelters and all that. Some people, some people prepare for the storm, they pack up and they go, so go to some of their relatives' house in the Northeast. Some yeah. people do that as well. And yeah. or some people, just, some people just drive out state. And I mean, I just don't like to evacuate. I even tell my... Abu and Ami, I'm like, bro, evacuation, bahut, bahut mm-hmm. takhleef hoogi usme, itni traffic yeah. hoogi highway pe, yuke sarif hamni thori jo evacuate karen, abu aur bhi loog, aur bhi loog hai. Of course, yeah, of course. Aur bhi loog hai, evacuate karen, agar, mm-hmm. to uh, evacuation ki traffic bahut buri hoti hai, and it's just, it's, 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 it's just get bad. I mean, hurricane time here, I would say, I just hope and pray and make dua that there's no hurricane that's comes here, because yeah. just preparing for it, and just, the main thing here is pre- preparation for it, because mm-hmm. people go crazy, you go to a store, people are just going crazy, everything is empty, all the water bars mm-hmm. are empty. Yeah, all the, the, uh, the shelves are all empty. All yeah. the shelves are empty and stuff like that. It's just like you know, you can't if you can't find one thing, 
it's just like you know you're you're stuck you know and same thing yeah. same thing with, same thing with gas stations the gas lines are all the way to the back you can't find mm-hmm. gas and everybody people are, and people just get like people get very desperate for gas and everything mm-hmm. and you know it's just it's just like i mean obviously we were we obviously the, the smart thing to do here is whenever june starts june 1st is like officially the start of hurricane season is what they call it here yeah so mm-hmm. whenever june starts you start preparing you load up the water load up everything make sure you have the propane propane uh, gas tanks and everything so Funny story actually is when the May when the last major hurricane came here was well, back in 1992. I wasn't even born, and you know my dad was yeah. like you know recently came from Pakistan. Not recently as in like 20 years since he came from Pakistan, and you know right. obviously you know in Pakistan we know how much hurricane do I think? You know, my past Pakistan, how much hurricane? The cyclone, that that that. So my dad, my dad, didn't even know that hurricane was there. He was. Mm-hmm. My dad thought it was just like some like you know publicity sons just so people go people can go to the grocery store. I mean, bakwas karte pehle loki. Bakwas karte gaya ye ye publicity set hai taaki log store jaye aur cheeze khareede aur taaki economy jo hai wo stimulate ho. Ye conspiracy theory nahi hoti jo chalti rehti hai. Ha ha. Right. That's that's what my that's what my dad thought it was. Okay. So he listened to the news and there was a hurricane Andrew. I mean, like if you guys ever had a chance, whoever who was listening, Google hurricane Andrew. It's probably the most one of the most destructive hurricanes to ever hit Miami or just in general just Florida or the U.S. even. Really. Okay. So yeah, Hurricane Andrew was coming in 1992, and you know my mom, my two younger brothers, because I wasn't even born, they were in mm-hmm. Pakistan, and my dad was here because my dad was actually working, and my my mom and my two my two older brothers actually were in Pakistan. So uh, you know he was working, and he's like he looked at the news, and people he's like, he listened to the news He's like, bro, if you don't think this hurricane is coming, you're actually kind of like stupid. <laughs> you have to like actually <laughs> actually prepare. You have to actually prepare for this hurricane. This is a major hurricane, mm-hmm. Category Five and stuff like that. Then you know you they board up the wall and everything like that. So. Uh, But it was bad. It was that hurricane. Hurricane Andrew was bad because after yeah. that, after that, you, you they changed the whole building codes in Miami. Because where we live, the, the the eye of the storm is the main thing. So the eye of the storm was actually supposed to go uh, to the area where we live. Mm-hmm. Luckily, mm-hmm. it turned towards like towards towards another area. So once mm-hmm. it turns to another area, that area was wholly destructed. Like mm-hmm. like it was like really bad. Car tooted gaya, pure sab kuch tooted gaya. Pure truck wag, truck wagar hote hain, gaariyan hoti, wo puri ho lad gayi. That's how powerful these storms, these storms, these storms can actually get. So the yeah, eye of the really. storm is like the main thing. So if you're if you're within the eye of the storm, like it's gonna be really bad. So if you're if you're like projected or forecasted to get within the eye, then you have to evacuate. It's just simple as that. I mean, पहले जान बचा लो फिर घर तो बाद में मन जाएगा ना लेकिन पहले अपने आप को बचाओ. Yeah, right. That's the thing. Yeah, you were just mentioning earlier. Okay, evacuation. Obviously, you don't like that. It's painful. You know, the roads are all blocked off. The airports are probably really full. Uh, so nobody wants to do that, right? But at a certain point, maybe you have to. Right, exactly. At a certain point, you have. But to. hopefully, that's not too often. Like maybe yeah, every ten years. I, I mean, we're not we're not in a flood zone, obviously. Here, so they tell you if you're in a flood zone, that way you yeah. can prepare for it. You're required by Florida law to get hurricane insurance for your house. That's just yeah. that's your requirement. Yeah. What's interesting about the U.S. is uh, I don't know about the rest of the world that much in terms of climate and natural disasters, but the U.S. definitely has its fair share of them. A lot of them. Oh, definitely. Now, for example, for sure. where I moved from Texas, right? Texas has a, a tornado season, so they have tornadoes. It's just like you know, wherever you go, you're not you know, safe from anything. Mm-hmm. You know, you're always going to have some sort of a you know a storm or some sort of, of a course. natural disaster that can affect you. I mean, if you're in the Northeast, you might have a blizzard that affects you. Blizzards, yeah, really bad blizzards, yeah. यहाँ पे इतना बुरा ब्लेजर्ड हुआ था एक्चुअली दिस इज द रीजन आई हैव लीव द नॉर्थ ईस्ट मतलब मुझे मैं बहुत ही लाइक भर गया था नॉर्थ ईस्ट आई वाज जस्ट लाइक आई डोंट वांट टू लिव हियर सो या यू आर राइट द नॉर्थ ईस्ट गेट्स द ब्लेजर्ड्स द द सेंट्रल ऑफ द यूएस गेट्स द टोर्नेडोज द वेस्ट कोस्ट गेट्स द अर्थ क्वेक्स सो यू नॉट रेली सेफ एनी वेयर यू जस्ट हैव टू कैन आई मीन इट्स अ बिग कंट्री यू नो इफ यू कंपेयर द साइज ऑफ द यूएस टू लाइक Europe, I think US is bigger than all of Europe by itself. It's a huge country. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Now, did you say you you were born in the U.S. or were you born in Pakistan? No, I was born and raised in Miami. Yeah. How often do you go to Pakistan? I'm guessing fairly often. Yeah, very very often. So basically, ever since I was young, we would go to Pakistan every other year, and we would go for two yeah. months during our summer vacations. That's what we would do. Because my obviously my mom was a housewife, my dad would go for like a month, and they would come back by himself because he had to work. But you mm-hmm. know, we would go, and my you know, I would mostly stay in Islamabad. Because that's where you know my challah was and everything, and my cousins were there. They were my age and stuff like that. So I would go out with them, and then you know we would play cricket and stuff like that. So two months yeah. extensively in Pakistan. I mean, it was probably like you know I miss doing that. I can't do that now, obviously, because you're working and you know life changes and stuff like that. But sometimes, right. sometimes you know, I just, I just, I just miss, I just miss going mm-hmm. for two months and just being yeah. in Islamabad right. and just you know, playing mm-hmm. cricket. And it's just like it's just such a, a different vibe, you know, get a different it's vibe. Different vibe. Vibe. Yeah. Um, हम जब जाते हैं ना पाकिस्तान, so it's a different experience for us than for the people who are actually living there, right? 
हम वहाँ पे जा रहे हैं एज लाइक विजिटर्स वर हैविंग अ लॉट ऑफ फन वी प्रॉब्ली हैव द मनी एज वेल सो यू नो वी कैन वी कैन एंड अप डूइंग वट एवर वी वॉन्ट एंड या द होल द होल समर वॉज अ ब्लास्ट फॉर एस बिकॉज ऑफ दैट राइट फ्री टाइम नो रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज नो स्कूल नो असाइनमेंट्स जस्ट क्रिकेट एंड लॉस ऑफ रियली गुड फूड राइट Yeah, <laughs> and, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, you could enjoy. That, that's where the memories are. And yeah, now I, I've I've had a full time job for the last eight years, mm-hmm. and with that you get about ten fifteen days off per year. Right, exactly. Uh, which is very generous of the companies. Exactly. Because they're not in the U.S. You're not. They're not required to give you paid time off. This is the only country. This is the only like first world country that does not have any laws around like paid time off for employees. Wow. So whatever the companies yeah. are giving you is uh, out of their own like generosity. And unfortunately, even that's not enough. You know, uh, sometimes I just want a good old summer break. Yeah, exactly, exactly, man. Yeah, I miss those two. I miss those two months summer breaks. To be honest with you, man, it's just like you know, you can, now yeah. you can only get like some of three weeks off. That's probably what you can yeah. probably get. I mean, you know, it's just it's just like you know, you miss those two. I mean, you miss those you miss those two months off, and especially Pakistan. So, but yeah, I my 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 obviously, my to yeh rata ki har saal Pakistan jaane. Like obviously, yeah. har har saal nahi. I mean, every other year, you know, right. just to stay connected, just to stay connected. Yeah. Of course, of course. When was the last time that you went? I went actually just last month, actually. Acha. Oh wow. Okay. For how long? I went for two weeks actually. I went for two, two weeks. weeks. Okay. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah that's really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would you ever consider moving back to Pakistan or doing something with Pakistan in the future? Uh, like, what are your long-term goals, or what do you have in mind? You know what? That's a very good question, Habib. Uh, I would. I am yeah. very passionate about like. I'm very passionate to Pakistan. Really, something to do. Something about Pakistan. Always doing something about Pakistan. Doing stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, I would love to move back. And recently, I, I forgot to mention last when I went last month. Actually, got my nick, my I still got my nick done as well. So I'm actually married now as well. So. Oh wow! Nice. Wow! Congrats! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, you know, and I was, I always, you know, when we kind of me and my wife actually talk about this as well. Said, uh, mm-hmm. hey, could we live? Could we? Should we live in Pakistan? You know, you do you want to go? Do you yeah. want to? I mean, she's gonna come to the U.S. Yeah, obviously, you know, for starters. Yeah, but yeah, we always we always mention about okay. Moving back to Pakistan or you know staying in the U.S., you know that's always like that's always like a main question that comes up. But it's just like yeah. once you get used to a certain lifestyle here, it's always hard to go back. You know, it's it's just like it's just so hard because I mean I even talked to sometimes some of the dad about this. Like yeah, it's just so hard for us to go back. You know, it's just like you mm-hmm. know it's, it's just things are so different there. When I when you know, when my family left Pakistan, it was just things were different and now things are different. How things work and everything like that. But main thing with me is I wouldn't rule it out in the future. You never know. Yeah. But I think right. as as living in the U.S. as as a Pakistani American as the Pakistani diaspora, there's always something that we can do. You know, there's always mm-hmm. something that we can do to to help Pakistan and stuff like that. That that's mm-hmm. always that's yeah. always been. I'm always passionate about that. And if anybody yeah. has any anybody has some sort of an idea for that, definitely definitely be because I'm always I'm always passionate for that for doing something for Pakistan. So, mm-hmm. so whether it's, wait, even wait, even if, even if it's something little like sending money to Pakistan, you know, that 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 oh, of course, yeah. like, that creates like a big impact on the economy itself. So the impact, yeah, it's it's yeah. a huge impact. Like every dollar there counts, you know. Right, exactly. the dollars got like the There was actually a stat done by I yeah. think the government of Pakistan or by PTI or one of Imran Khan. Ke jo overseas Pakistanis hai na, they pretty much run the economy. If you think about it because they send so yeah. much remit- remittances to Pakistan and Pakistan and, and their families in Pakistan. That they basically mm-hmm. run the economy. It's like a very huge yeah. impact of the economy, and uh, you know that's what mm-hmm. that's why, like you know, that's why you have a lot of overseas Pakistanis, you know, such as myself, who support Imran Khan because you know he understands the impact that overseas and the diaspora can bring. So you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's it's a it's a big role. It's just like it's not like some people are like, oh yeah, we don't live in Pakistan, so you know we don't have to do anything. Like no, I mean you can still do a lot of stuff for Pakistan while you're living here as well. You know, so, of course, yeah. It, it, I mean, there's there's so there's so many there's so many avenues. And I I completely agree with you. Going back to Pakistan and living there might be. A little difficult now that we're used to a different lifestyle over here, and then most of our careers are established over here. You know, it just it's just very hard to kind of just pack up and go back, right? Yeah, exactly. We want to, but you know that doesn't mean we cannot mentally connect to Pakistan more. Yeah, exactly. That's for sure. I mean, I would say the I would say the main thing is like okay, I mean, careers, right? Career is always the main yeah. thing you base your life around. So, I mean, yeah. will you will you get the main question is will we get compensated the same way we get compensated here in the U.S. In Pakistan, I mean, it, it depends. It depends on what you know, what what company mm-hmm. we work for. We may or we may we may not. I mean, I, I mean, I, I always think about that. You know, I always like, yeah, maybe like in the future, you know, maybe we, I can just like look at some uh, job postings over there and be like, okay, maybe this match this matches, and maybe we can do this. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Me kuch logon ko jaanta hoon jo like gore people are very good at doing this, right? Uh, a yeah. lot of my ex coworkers have done stuff like this, or people from college where they just uh, leave the U.S. To a cheaper country like Costa Rica, Peru, or something like somewhere that seems really out of the blue, a much cheaper cost of living country, and then mm-hmm. basically they just end up some with some kind of gig that pays them U.S. dollars in those countries so that they can uh, have have a bigger bang for their buck. Oh wow! 
Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, that would be great. That would be great. Yeah, similar for Pakistan. I mean, Pakistan yeah. is not a, a destination point for, for Gore people, but I know a few Pakistanis just through word of mouth and through relatives and stuff like that, where people have gone from here to Pakistan, continued working for their companies and uh, mm -hmm. continue getting, getting paid in U.S. dollars. Now that, you know, that seems... That, that you know, that sounds that sounds like the life, bro. I'm telling you, bro. That, yeah. That, 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 yeah. You know, you live in Pakistan. Yeah. Yeah, you're like tripling your salary there. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're like tripling you know? the power of your money. Yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. it would make a huge impact. The main thing with the main thing with us is like you know obviously like our our Pakistani society me complex चलता रहता है ये अग्रेजी बोलोगे तो पता नहीं आप पता नहीं आसमान पे चढ़ जाओगे you know <laughs> that's like that's like that's always the main the main complex and it comes from because you know we were ruled by the British so they were mm -hmm. superior they were superior to us so we thought okay if we speak English we're gonna be like them so forget our language and stuff like that and I'll give you a, a better a better example a better analogy yeah like for instance like I told you about Miami Miami you have a lot of Spanish people right and yeah. I grew up I grew up with a lot of Spanish people. And their kids, they learn Spanish first because, you know, they're yeah. like, okay, you go to like a uh, five-year-old Pablo or Julio, whatever his name is going to be. He's going to speak. He's going to be speaking to you in fluent Spanish, five years, five years old and everything like that. And the main thing for that is because the rulers that they had, the, where they came from, their rulers were Spanish. So, I mean, they don't really have that, you know, you know they have that complex. You yeah. know, like, oh, if we, if we don't, if we speak this language, we're going to be less superior. If we speak that language, we're going to be more superior. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. they're very proud of their culture, you know. So yeah, we have that. We have that complex. I mean, it's not our fault because it's just the way things were. You know, we were ruled by the British, and uh, you know they they just ruled over us. So they were we, they were superior. They were superior to us, and we just thought, okay, we, if we speak their language, you know, we're gonna be we're gonna be just disappear as now. But you know, I, but I, I, yeah, but I do I do agree with that. You know, there should be obviously a shared connection. Uh, we should obviously you know teach our kids what to do growing up. That should be the main thing. The the thought process that you should have to have is if you're living in the U.S., your kid is gonna learn English when he goes to school. It is just as simple as that, you know, so that's that's the main thing. So when you actually uh, in within the house, you can obviously keep a very uh, Pakistani environment, talking Urdu and stuff like that. And, you know, and which is what which is what my parents did. You know, when we would come back from school, we would talk in English. And then my mom would be like, you know what? I don't understand anything you're saying. Talk to me in Urdu. That's how that's how that's how it would be. You know, that that just that just changes the mindset, you know. And then right now you know, I'm fluent in Urdu, very fluent. I know mm -hmm. I've been you know, I mean, it's just very fluent, you know. Mm -hmm. That's you know, you, and it's, it's it adds to it adds to your personality. You know, when you know different languages and stuff like that, you can connect to more different people. You know, you'd be very uh, multidimensional. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's always it's always good to focus on culture and you know stay stay connected to music and stuff like that. You know, me personally myself, I love listening to old school Pakistani music. That's kind of yeah. my main thing. You know, I always try to like you know connect to it and you know and just just mm -hmm. stay connected to it. Uh, in terms of like Pakistani music, uh, quick, I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but last week and I was actually in New Jersey and I actually went to the, the Janoon concert. In New Jersey, oh, nice. yeah. yeah. Oh, that's and cool. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually, it was actually. I was thinking about the, going to that one. Yeah, off the chain. It was off the chain. Like they, they, they brought the house down. Like it was, that was that. That's how it was. Wow. So it was like, I mean, you have like five, five to seven thousand people coming mm -hmm. in, coming in for a Junoon concert. While in the U.S., that's a pretty, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big thing, you know. That's, so that uh, is pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Actually, tell me this: uh, since you went to that concert, right? Ajo, I was concerned about this. You know, I I grew up here in the '90s too, right? तो यहाँ पे ये ऐसा होता था कि पाकिस्तानी कॉन्सर्ट्स कई बार सेफ नहीं होते थे मतलब वो क्राउड जो आती थी ना कई बार दे वुड बी लिटल इंटिमिडेटिंग लॉट ऑफ फाइट्स वुड ब्रेक आउट मेल पाकिस्तानी मेला पाकिस्तानी कॉन्सर्ट्स एंड स्टफ लाइक दैट पूंडी बहुत होती थी यू नो लॉस ऑफ गाइज वुड जस्ट बी ऑन रैंडम पीपल्स गर्ल्स एंड यार्ट लॉट ऑफ फाइट्स तो मुझे खास तौर पर आई ग्रू अप इन द नॉर्थ ईस्ट सो स्पेशली नॉर्थ ईस्टर्न पाकिस्तानी वाइब गिवस मी सम ऑफ दी एस टी remembering a lot of those uh, <laughs> earlier events that I went to was was a safety a little better this time around because this is, I was exactly thinking about Janoon the Janoon concert like I was more inclined to go to the Janoon concert in Houston uh, right. and there was also one in Dallas too actually in Garland right. uh, I felt like the Pakistani crowd in Texas was a little bit more mature like and uh, tell me tell me how that concert was in the northeast did you get any negative vibes there it was good it was really good and yeah as far as like negative vibes hote hain do teen do teen log jo pindu log hote hain na wo aa jate hain ऑलमोस्ट इन द एंड आई ऑलमोस्ट फेंटेड If I if the concert didn't stop, I was probably gonna faint. 
And uh, but yeah, but here, but as far as as far as like the crowd came up, there was one uncle. He's pushing everybody. He's like pushing everybody. He's like he pushed him, and he's like, mm-hmm. and he, then he pushed, then he pushed my, then he pushed my brother. And then I have to, obviously I got into his face. I'm like, yo, bro, what's your issue? I got my slug yet. But he got got the cliff. I pop you into that. Now the the kid is a little boy. Well, what get the name? Ah, pictures I have. Man, man, two hundred two hundred dollars. Dm is is show. Okay, man, I got. Hey, we got. We also two hundred dm. You also two hundred dm. So that doesn't that doesn't you know clarify you for like pushing people yeah. and stuff like that. So very that was he was a very immature uncle. I thought I think man, I got to him that already. But the BVB Yogi, to be honest. Because you came up here, big, 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 up here, boy. Shut up! I got a scene beat up up here. They were like giving oh, wow. it, which is which is which is surprising, you know, for a Pakistani yeah. show. I, I was I was expecting you can tell you can tell the arena people, okay, yeah, we don't need this because our people don't drink, right? But apparently they they just they just had it over there. But uh, no, mm-hmm. but then when we when we when we were in the parking lot, another fight break out as well, and you know they were just like you know saying all these swear words and stuff like that. I'm like, come on, man! Like I mean, like the orte there's women there, and you're just saying all these swear words and stuff like that. Come mm-hmm. on. No, I like show show a little bit more maturity about that, you know. Yeah. It's just like I mean, right, right. But I mean, you know, if there was like a, there was like a few instances. I would say the majority of the crowd was very was very mature, for the most part. That's good. But uh, mm-hmm. there was a few instances where you obviously have those uh you know the mm-hmm. bundi people that come that come out of nowhere. So yeah, that, right. So, yeah. Uh, I think a lot of it is because uh, me and my brothers talk about this a lot. A lot of this is because the New York, uh, the city that kind of gathers the Northeast up is New York City, right? right. And that is a hub for new immigrants. So Pakistan, I think they're not used to the structure and the laws over here, right? They're still getting used to it. And uh, we've, we've personally seen a lot of those types of things firsthand growing up over here, which we did not see when we started moving out of the Northeast. You can Northeast say it's some hub, bad. like it just brings all the immigrants together. When a lot of people they uh they, they get some money, they get some careers, they start moving out, and they you know uh, they start getting more integrated into you know American culture and right, understanding right, the exactly. structure over here. That's the that's the theory that we have, but we're we're not completely sure. Like in Ekbar, which is yada, like Eid ka time tha for Eid, we went to uh, Jackson Heights in New York. Right. I don't know if you're mm-hmm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with that. Yeah, everybody knows Jackson. Yeah, Jackson, Jackson, Jackson Heights. Jackson yeah. Heights some gay. Yeah, it was that we Jackson Heights and we ate food and kebabs and stuff for Eid. So we drove two hours to Connecticut to Jackson Heights. Ke. During that time, we were just there maybe for 2-3 hours before we left. But during those 2-3 hours, three fights were started there. Like three different fights broke out among uh, Pakistani guys. Okay, I want to tell you something here. I had to do it during editing. I was saying that three fights were broken out here. Three fights were broken out here. जो मैंने अपने आपको पकड़ लिया मैंने पूरा अल्फाज नहीं बोला लेकिन इट मेक्स नो सेंस इन उर्दू इंग्लिश में कहा जाता है थ्री फाइट्स ब्रोक आउट विच मेक्स कम्प्लीट सेंस कि तीन लड़ाइयाँ वहाँ पे शुरू हो गई थी बट इन इंग्लिश यू कैन से ब्रोक आउट लेकिन उसको डायरेक्ट ट्रांसलेट करते हुए उर्दू में मेक्स नो सेंस तो ये एक और एग्जाम्पल है मेरी हाफ बेक्ट उर्दू का उर्दू और पंजाबी मेरी काफ़ी कमज़ोर है और दिस इज जस्ट अनदर फनी एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दैट Anyway, going back, मैं एक और बार आपके लिए प्ले कर देता हूँ अपनी गलती ताकि आपको रिवाइंड ना करना पड़े हेर इट इज बट ड्यूरिंग दोज टू थ्री आवर्स तीन लड़ाइयाँ टूट तीन लड़ाइयाँ टूट तीन लड़ाइयाँ टूट तीन लड़ाइयाँ तीन लड़ाइयाँ टूट वहाँ पर शुरू हुई थी लाइक थ्री डिफरेंट फाइट्स ब्रोक आउट अमंग पाकिस्तानी गाइज यू ना एक दूसरे को तंग कर रहे हैं या मूवी थिएटर पर लड़ाई हो गई क्रॉस द स्ट्रीट वो यू नो लाइक यू सर फुल ऑन पंजाबी में गालियाँ ये इससे इससे खास तौर पर पता लगता है नॉट खर्सिंग इन इंग्लिश देर खर्सिंग इन पंजाबी देर खर्सिंग इन उर्दू एंड पंजाबी एंड लाइक यू नो दोस देन यू कैन टेल कि ये यू नो दीज पीपल आर नॉट मोस्ट लाइक देर नॉट बोर्न एंड रेज हेयर दे जस्ट प्रॉब्लम मूव हेयर फ्यू इयर्स गो इट जस्ट डिसअपॉइंटिंग वन यू हेयर दम स्वेरिंग लाइक दैट इन फ्रॉम लाइक अदर इट जस्ट डिसअपॉइंटिंग यू नो इट जस्ट लाइक दैट मे कम लाइक मेनटेन यूर डिग्निटी ओनली थिंग that you know that that just kind of bothers you but uh and even like but yeah as far as them being safe i think in the us you know the pakistani concerts are going to be safe because you know you obviously have you know the laws of the us that are here if anything happens you know you're protected but in pakistan i wouldn't recommend you know sending any family member to a to a concert i mean maybe maybe yeah. it's like maybe if it's a guy you know he can probably go to a concert that's fine but like to any female member of the family no absolutely not i'm yeah. not sending any female member of the family to a concert in pakistan you know because it's, it's a, yeah the crowd is just i mean depending on if the crowd the crowd is that the crowd in some areas is just like it's just not that good mm-hmm. and you know mm-hmm. you you wouldn't want any of your female members to be there it's sad yeah it's sad. Uh, we you know like the uncle you were just mentioning right at the at the concert that uncle outside of that pakistani event that junoon concert he probably would not have caused that kind of trouble oh of course not 
Like you probably would not have pushed people at other places, you know, if somebody cut him off in line. Like in Desi, humare pata nahi kyun aise. I hope uh, people can spend some time thinking about this as they listen to this, right? Ke Desi humare kathe jab hote na at any Desi centered event, we start getting a little ob- obnoxious sometimes. I don't know why. Like this, this animal instinct opens up in between um, all of us, and it doesn't matter what age we are. You know, the sixty year olds are acting like eighty year olds. The thirty year olds are acting like eighty year olds. Everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. There's just this sense of immaturity that opens up. Just like, sense of immaturity. I mean, it's like, hey, ये तो क्या ये बस सोच ही होते हैं ना हाँ ये तो हमारे लोग हैं कुछ नहीं होगा कुछ नहीं करेंगे ये बस आराम से बस कॉन्सर्ट जाएगा जो मर्जी करो हाँ देखी जाएगी जो भी होगा देखी जाएगी जो भी होगा अब वो गोरे के साथ इस तरह का गोरे के गोरों के सामने इस तरह की हरकत नहीं करेंगे वो इंसान के बच्चे बन के बैठे रहेंगे हाँ वो ये होगा बस they see like it's like the irony of that you know Yeah, right. So, I mean, my mom, my mom was mentioning to me that when Pakistan goes to the jab, so they sit in the jab and the Pakistanis, you know, leaving the US are completely fine. That's the exact flight. That's the exact flight with the same people. The US plane is out, everything is okay. That US plane is out and the Pakistan is going like this. It's so interesting to see that change in personality in people during that flight. Well, the same people are If Pakistan pe plane abhi touchdown hone hi wala hai, they stop uh, following all the rules. The flight attendants are like, "Sit down, we're going to land." वो खड़े हुए हैं अपने टैक्सी निकाल रहे हैं ऊपर से यू नो अपना लगेज निकाल रहे हैं यू नो खड़े हुए हैं दरवाजे के साथ खड़े हो गए हैं लाइक दे डोंट केयर अबाउट सीट बेल्ट्स और रूल्स और एनीथिंग लाइक दैट. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that's when I travel to Pakistan or when I go to Pakistan, you always have these people like the plane just landed and yeah, you know how you have to go to the tarmac and just taxi yeah. all the way to the gate. And they have already mm-hmm. started standing up. Wo apna saman nikal lo person. I'm like, bro, sit down, bro. I'm like, wo the aeroplane is chala di hai. I'm like, nah, you have to sit down. There's safety reasons. You have to sit down. But I'm like, bro, come on, man. This, this is that's the that's the only thing. That's the only thing that gets that gets to me sometimes. Like, bro, come on, man. Uh-huh. They just like kind of follow the rules and stuff like that, you know. And same yeah. thing, the same thing. Even within Pakistan, you know, Pakistan me lo kachra pekenge. But the sadak ke upper ye wo bahar jayenge na bahar jaake koi koi kachra nahi pekega. Everybody, sab insan ke bache bande. Exactly. Bache. It is like that, yeah. I mean, I got a, I got a thousand stories that come to my mind about this. At the end of the day, we love it too. There's so many things to love about it. Like, it, yeah, we love we love Pakistan, of course. You know, yeah. Like, but yeah, okay. But I said some koshis karein ke we just want the the personality and the outlook to change among people. Yeah, definitely for sure. That's that's always the number one thing, you know. Change the perceptions and change the personality mm-hmm. of people for the betterment of our own people. You know, that's that's the main. Exactly. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's all about self respect. If we uh, goron ki respect karein, apni respect nahi karein, what does that say about us? You know, if we उनके लॉस को रिस्पेक्ट कर रहे हैं लेकिन अपने लॉस को नहीं रिस्पेक्ट कर रहे हैं सही बात है वी हैव टू रिस्पेक्ट इच अदर वी रिस्पेक्ट आवर सेल्फ्स सो एग्जैक्टली यू आर राइट आर राइट वी आर राइट अबाउट दैट हम्म फॉर श्योर फॉर श्योर हम्म नाउ यू वर यू आर 24 इयर्स ओल्ड हाउ ओल्ड वर यू व्हेन 9/11 हैपेंड I was so I was born in 95 so I was 6 इयर्स ओल्ड व्हेन 9/11 हैपेंड एंड आई रिमेंबर आई रिमेंबर इट वेगली टू बी ऑनेस्ट विद यू And because really I was obviously young. six years old, very vaguely and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I remember mm-hmm. the aftermath of what 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 we had to deal with here. I mean, it was just. I mean, l- l- luckily, I have never here in Miami. We had the advantage because you know there's obviously a lot of Hispanic people, so they're immigrants and stuff like that. So I've luckily, while living in the U.S., have never experienced any sort of discrimination or racism based on the based on my faith or my ethnicity. Thank God, mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah, and hopefully it stays that way, you know. And the other thing here is that you know the the Spanish people here, we kind of look we kind of look like the Hispanic, we kind of look like Spanish too. I mean, think about yeah. it. So we kind of we kind of blend in with them. So you can't yeah. really tell, or oh, is that person uh, Pakistani or is he Muslim? You can't really tell unless you visually show it yourself, you know. If you like visually meaning like if you know if a woman goes out and wears a hijab. Mm-hmm. And you know she and that obviously obviously tells it that's always tells it visually right, but uh, luckily yeah. I've I've never experienced anything like that. But uh, I remember mm-hmm. I remember after that I've heard so many stories about other areas you know of other areas and Muslim communities of uh, how people have been mm-hmm. like you know got they got somebody said something rude to them and you know and uh, there was like a hijabi yeah. working hijabi working at and here in South Florida actually the hijabi working at a hospital some Gora guy came mm-hmm. he's like no I don't want to be treated by you I don't want to be I don't want you to like you know uh, take care of me and stuff like that and. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was tough. It was tough here because to 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 deal with all that. I mean, luckily I've never experienced that, but just to hear about all of that and you know, just it because it just kind of brings you down. You know, it's just like mm-hmm. well, I mean, like we live here. You know, so something happens to us. Whatever somebody says something to us, you know, and uh, yeah, I, I think I think people uh, around your age, especially, they didn't have to worry too much because by the time you started going to school, uh, well, you were about six years old when it happened, but you, so you were already kind of entering school. But by the time you got to a decent age where other kids understood who you are. And uh, you know what religion do you follow? A lot of things had started cooling down from nine eleven. Whereas right, exactly. uh, a lot of the kids who were actually going to school at that time, like around high school or middle school, like me, 
uh, we kind of saw that change from pre 9-11 to post 9-11. And that was that was very observable. Yeah, it was it was it was I mean, it was really bad. I mean, I would say like I would say I mean, I mean, I would I would hear like stories from people in regards yeah. to like what the, what they're going through and how everything is just like, you know, how people are treating them and stuff like that. Yeah. Luckily, 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 Miami is, is the very least racist city, I would say, because you have so many immigrants, right. immigrants from all over the world. And, you know, you don't really yeah. have to deal with you don't have to really deal with that. And if we feel more protected with the Spanish people, mainly because, yeah. you know, they're immigrants just like us. And they don't really they don't really bother you because they know they're on they're, they're in the same boat as, as us as immigrants. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. as they are come, coming from immigrant immigrant families. So luckily, luckily, we haven't dealt anything and hopefully it stays that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like to I like to be, give people a perspective because whenever I get asked from uh, people who are outside the U.S., right, and especially due to this podcast, I get asked that question a lot, which is, you know, uh, the U.S. seems really unsafe right now. I don't want to come there. You know, I'd rather go to uh, Europe or something. Right. I mean, yeah, because, because 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 with all the all the shootings that are going on and stuff yeah. like that, and you know, it's just like you don't am- you, they can't they can't even amend the law. amend the law. That that's that's mm-hmm. just one of the things you know because they're like, oh no, the the yeah. the Second Amendment, which is the bare arms amendment, we can't change that mm-hmm. because it's like two hundred years old, and you know, it's just it's just like an ongoing debate. That's 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 never gonna that's never gonna end. So it's very yeah yeah those that's one law for example that I, I don't think it's ever gonna change honestly. Yeah, it won't change. Like I've seen the debates happen. It's not going to change because uh, it's just it's an inherent part of the constitution here. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's outdated. It's an outdated law, but it's just how it is. And and people are right, honestly. You've already distributed millions and millions. I think like there's like 300 million guns distributed across the country. How are you going to take those back? Yeah, exactly. How are you going to just take them back? You're just going to go door to door and just take the guns back? You can't. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. Unfortunately for us as Muslims, right? It's even worse because when the Second Amendment meets uh, meets uh, racism and Islamophobia, it, it gets pretty yeah. bad. Like there's been a few incidents in, in Texas where people have just showed up with guns outside of mosques and just kind of uh, done a demonstration. They haven't done anything yet, but... Oh, wow. Really? Oh, my God. Just, I mean, yeah, it, that, that made the news a few times. I, they can, you know, because they're, it's an open carry state. You can you can carry as long as you have a license legally to to have your guns out in, I guess, public property. Mm-hmm. They can legally stand outside of a mosque on the road and uh, show off their guns. As long as they're not firing the guns, they're they're legally allowed to do that. Wow. Yeah, but man, it is obviously I, very intimidating. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I just I just think about that and I'm like, bro, if I take my like if I take, if I take my future kids to a masjid and that's happening, like what is it? What is like? What are they? think you know it's just like yeah. you know that's just that's just one of those things like you know like, you know, we were talking about moving back to pakistan and stuff like that these yeah. are one of the, these are one of the things i that, that actually like you know is actually a pro about pakistan it's like you don't yeah. have to worry about all this stuff you know yeah right like you know it's your own your own country your own people muslim country yeah. you don't you have to worry about all this stuff i mean you may you may have to worry about other things that are just that are prevalent within pakistani society but not yeah. not this not 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 scared about practicing yeah. your own faith I mean, the way that things are now things i would say things are very calm now because you yeah. know the, the the landscape changes a little bit, the political landscape changes, and the way things happen in the news that divert the calm, attention. But yeah, like you said, it, it is calm. But for example, there was just a shooting last night again in Texas somewhere uh, oh, really? at a college at a college party. Yeah, Greenville, Texas, uh, pretty close to where I used to live. Actually, now when you look at how many people live in the U.S. and how often these incidents happen, it's still not that common that you have to worry for your life every single waking minute. You know. It's still relatively safe. So I like to kind of tell people from the outside, okay, yeah, yeah, you know, this stuff is happening. I hated myself. Yeah, that's for, that's for sure. Like, for the most part, you have to calculate how many of these incidents are occurring divided by how many people actually make it alive through every single day. And, you know, for the most part, we're okay. As long as yeah. you kind of follow a more kind of a, you could say, like a boring lifestyle. I personally, I like to avoid crowds. My crowds get of... मैं कोशिश करता हूँ कि मैं कम ही जाऊँ लाइक कॉन्सर्ट वगैरह ठीक है कभी कभी देख लिया कोई कॉन्सर्ट लेकिन मेरी ज्यादा कोशिश होती है कि आई आई ट्राई टू अवॉइड बिग क्राउड्स बिकॉज दैट्स वेर अनफॉर्चुनेटली दैट्स वेर थिंग्स आर मोर लाइकली टू हैपन वर्सेस यू नो जस्ट Sitting right. in your home watching a Netflix movie or something. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I and I and I agree. And in South Florida, we had that. I don't know if we saw in the news the Parkland shooting that we had here in the high school and stuff like that. And that's, there's the other thing too, school shootings. That school shooting too is like, okay, if, if I'm going to send my kid to school, is he going to be safe? That's another thing you have to bring up too. Is like, where are you safe? You know, that's yeah, the thing. Right. That's the thing too. So, I mean, that the parkland is a little like like an hour away from Miami, I would say, an hour and a half away from Miami. But there's just, I mean, when that happened, I'm like, wow, man. I mean, that's very close to where I live. And, you know, if something happens to, if yeah. I'm sending my kids here to school, like, you know, what's going to happen? You know, it's just, you know, these things, these things, you know, especially, especially since, since I got married, you know, you think differently yeah. when you get married. You think about how you how you want to raise a family and everything. 
And yeah. you, you see all these incidents happening. I'm like, bro, is this is this is this safe? is this place safe for my kids? Is it like you know where, where are they safe when they go to school? Is like you know you you don't want you don't want to question stuff like that, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I hear you. Okay, Amza. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Abib. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode of Popcorn, remember to check out our other episodes. You can easily find all of them on our website, popcorn.com. You can also find us on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, jahan bhi aap podcast ko sunte hain, and Patari pe bhi hum hain. So find us wherever you want to listen to us and subscribe. We also really appreciate positive reviews on iTunes. And if you have any feedback, any questions, any comments, we love feedback. Feel free to message us on Instagram. You can follow us at at popcorn on Instagram or email us at hello at popcorn.com. We love getting feedback. We love hearing from you. And this podcast is specifically made for you, our Pakistani audience. I do this as kind of a side hobby right now. I do it out of pure passion to bring the Pakistani youth together across the world. And I hope I'm somewhat successful at doing that through this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Music